Welcome back guys! I have lately got several requests when it comes to actually how to solder your cells and also some requests about how do you remove the solder after you solder it to the cells. So basically guys, I have lately got several questions on about how to solder the cells and how I do it. So today I will talk a little bit about it and even though I may not go into detail that much, I will try to cover the basics as I'm working with it. So first of all, it's all important to understand that the positive side differs from the negative side when it comes to soldering. The positive side due to its construction does not suck as much heat as the negative side. That means you do not need the same amount of heat or you do not need to spend the same amount of time on heating it up to get it done. But on the other hand, my experience have also been that the positive side have been just slightly more difficult to solder due to oxides or other. If you have issues with soldering due to this, you first you need to look into what type of solder you are using. I always use 6040 solder and that's because that's very very simple to get hold of where I live. It's also cheap compared to some of the other ones. I do like the lead based one because it do work a little bit better with what I work with. Of course I always go with flux core resin and that's because I do not have to add anything extra outside of the solder. There is so many types of solder out there. I'm not going to go into the differences or why you should choose one over the other. I like this one, it works great and it's pretty much the, one of the cheaper ones that I can get hold of. When it comes to the soldering iron on the other hand, I always prefer, and I have told several of you guys that may be watching this and every, also on forums and other places that a soldering iron for doing this type of work need to have a decent mass. And as you can see here, this iron actually have decent mass and it has a decent tip as well. The soldering iron that I prefer should be 100 watt or more. You can do it with less wattage but then you will be even more concentrated to the heating mass over on the tip. I have done a quick video on soldering irons where I go through four of my soldering irons that I'm using and if you haven't watched that already I should suggest that you do that. Before you start soldering with your iron it's always important that you make sure that this one is actually hot. Do not just turn it on and go like Okay, it's hot enough, it melts the solder and then we start, because that will not work. All this mass here need to be heated up properly before you go ahead. And this ensures that you do not stress the cells more than you need to. Before soldering, the next part is actually about keeping the tip clean. This is very very important. Always before you sh should start solder and stop solder, always wet the tip. But before you solder, always make sure you clean it. I would say that there are at least two or three different ways, ways of cleaning it. One way is using this kind of brush here and just gently brush it off. You can also use a sponge like this one I show here. And you can also use this type of uh, sponge wool, I don't know what it's called like stuff. And when you have cleaned up the tip, it's always important to make sure that the tip is properly wet again. Because if you do not do this, the tip will wear out pretty fast. When you have soldering irons with new tips, never go ahead and take your file to clean it up. Because as soon as you use your file on a proper new that have the protective layer on it, you will destroy that protective layer. And when you do that, the solder itself will eat up the tip. Very very slowly perhaps, but at the same time fast enough that you have to buy a new tip in a couple of weeks. If you on the other hand have a copper tip like I have here, you will see that the tip do eat up very fast. And then you need to make sure that you clean it up every now and then with this and this will wear out the tip very fast 
And as well, as soon as you have cleaned it up and you made the tip a little bit better again, do not forget to heat it up or wet it up again with the solder. As I said, do not file down tips that are newly bought. Next part is about the cells. Basically, I do not do much about my cells before I solder them. But if you are afraid of that this will not work or you have solder that does not work properly, you should go ahead and clean them somewhat. And actually, I use this brush again and I just clean it up like this. If this does not work, you may need to use some sanding paper and scuff it up as well. And that will most likely get rid of the last residue. And in worst case, you may need to add some rosin or flux in, on top of it. When you do the solder, this is rather important that you are aware of that you should not stress the cells by applying a lot of heat for a long time. So it's a matter of heat, solder, waiting for it to flow and you're done. So basically, if I take a cell like this, you take a tip and you press it to the cell, solder in between, and you wait for it to flow and you release. And that's how you do it. As you can see, this one flowed up pretty well. Here, beside this cell, you have one that does not flow. This one did not take the solder properly. And that can be due to issues with the cell. So, I go back, I clean it up a little bit. And I do it again. Make sure you have enough solder. Do not add too much. Apply heat, some solder. You wait a little bit and you lift off. And you have the solar attaching. So let me show you this a little bit closer. Apply the heat, some solder in between, wait and lift off. And as you can see, the solder flows out perfectly. It's not a matter of adding more time than 2 or 3 seconds and the cell will not be hurt. So let me show you that again. Add the heat gun or heat solar, so solder, wait, and you're done. So let's go through that again. Apply pressure, solder, wait, and you're done. What is important here is to make sure that you have the tip, the flat part of the tip, pressed against, flat against, so you transfer as much heat as possible during as small time as possible. And the solder I apply, I apply just in between the tip and the cell. That is the most fast way because it will melt due to the tip and at the same time transfer even more heat to the cell. So pressure, solder, done. Pressure, solder, wait and done. Pressure, solder, wait and done. So what you need to look up when you are doing this is to make sure that the solder flows out nicely. And the residue you see around here is actually the flux core that are there. And it, I suggest that you clear that up before you do anything else. So it's just a matter of taking this tool again and cleaning it up. If you do not add enough heat, what will happen then? You will get a cold joint. A cold joint is generally when you do not have enough heat applied. So for instance, if I do like that, I'm simulating a cold joint. So bear with me when I did only touch it for a short while. But this is what will happen and this is how it will look like when you're using a soldering iron that is not hot enough or that you are using or you don't have enough clean surface. So basically if we take your screwdriver and you can just move it away. So once again, if we take this one here, so solder, wait, and done. Pressure, solder, wait, done. And that's how easy it is to solder the cells. When you have soldered your cells, you may want to remove the solder from the cell or in that sense anything else as well. And I will generally say that there are three different ways of doing this. The first way is to go buy a copper strip like this one here. As you all are aware of a, a copper strip or copper in general 
do attach to the solder pretty well, especially the ones that are coated like this one here. So what you do is that you take your copper strip, you apply it between the solder on the object and your soldering iron. Before you do that, it's always good or always recommended first of all to make sure that the solder is easily removable by heating it up once time and then make sure that the tip is clean because you do not want to transfer solder from a tip to the object. So I generally just go over with my tool of cleaning and then I take this here, add it like that on top and what it will do, it will suck up the solder as you can see here. As you see it's now kind of silver colored. So you start in the end and you go inwards and you do it again and again until you actually have managed to suck most of it up. And at the same time do not add too much heat to the cell so let it rest. And doing this way you will be able to remove most of the solder on the cell and you get a pretty flat surface and the solder as you can see here ends up on this strip instead. That's one way of doing it. So let's add some solder back. Another way of doing this is a little bit of a trick that I learned earlier. And that's actually about bashing the cell against something. Do not bash it against a flat edge like this here, but use something soft like this. So what this is about is all about doing like that when the cell is hot. So first of all, you heat up the cell and at the same time bang it down. So what will happen is that when the solder is soft and floaty you will bang it against the surface and the solder will fall off. As you see here we have several and that was hot like hell and I burned my finger but as you see here the solder actually falls down like small small balls. If you're not happy with it you do it once more Let's see if I can get hot and soft and you do it like that. And I got a little bit more away. As you can see it's not perfect and that's how it actually is. The third way is what I would consider one of the fast way but still one of the rather dangerous way of doing it. The third way do require you first of all that you should be wearing gloves that are protective and I do recommend some kind of eyewear that protects your eye. So let me get that on. So basically doing this do require a compressor or some kind of air. Because it's all about blowing the solder away from the cell. And when doing this you need to understand that the solder will fly everywhere. That's why you have the protection. You will also fly solder everywhere on your bench and all the stuff that is around you. So before you do this, make sure that you remove stuff that you should not be drained in solder. So let's get going. It's the same procedure as the last time. You need to heat the cell up. And when you have heated it up, it's just a matter of touching this one and blowing it away. So I heat it up and I blow the whole cell away and let's do it again I heat it up and I blow it away it's recommended to have the cell on something firm that it does not blow away but as you can see it's pretty much clean and I would consider that this method is actually one of the methods that do clean it off the most but what you need to understand is that you will most likely damage the cell wrapping when you are doing uh, solar removal. So guys, I will consider this it for this video. To catch up a little bit, I have covered 
a little bit about how to solder the cells. About what soldering type that I use, solder type that I use, and the soldering iron. And how you prepare the soldering iron by cleaning it up and making sure that the tip is actually wet before you solder and before you shut it off. And also about that you should not use file on new tips that are uh, covered with some kind of coating because that will destroy the tip. I also quickly went through a little bit about how to remove solder afterwards from the cells. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video or, or at least learned something. If you do like this video and if you do want to support my work and I do suggest that you take a look at my Patreon page and become a Patreon member. You have the links down below. And if you do not want to go Patreon way you can always use PayPal as well. I would be really glad if you haven't subscribed already. Do not forget to press the subscribe button because that helps a lot as well. So guys once again thank you for watching and I see you next time.